Christians, uh, do we have the introspective and contemplative, shall we say, capacity to distinguish, okay, to classify our dissimilarity with the rest of the world? It is to say there is a cosmic particularity to those who abide in the divine, to those who abide in love and spirit in Jesus. There is a distinction to those who submit themselves to evil, to destruction, to hate, to sin. And this is the fundamental conundrum of this world. That both good and evil exist in this cosmos. In fact, this understanding is paramount to our Lutheran theological imagination. As a humanity, we are capable of creating sweet goodness, and yet capable of creating destructive evil. Did you hear this? Simultaneously, saints and sinners. Martin Luther, where we get our Lutheranism from, our Lutheran churches once said, be a sinner and let your sins be strong, or sin boldly. And let, but he says, let your trust in Christ be strong. Let that sink in for a moment. Jesus said, We do not belong to this world. Certainly, this makes a lot of sense as people of God. As followers of Jesus, we do have distinct values, distinct standards, modes of living, goals that often do clash with the world and at times are in direct opposition to the world. But I want to be careful with such a statement because the majority of my Christian siblings, they think that I'm referring to some kind of spiritual hierarchy or some kind of special revelation that places churchy people above non-churchy people. Or that somehow uh, we are better because we do not belong to this world. Or, or even more, some may take my words to mean that the world is going to hell and therefore we should want to escape this world for a better world. But not so. Not so at all. My beloved Calvary by the sea, my siblings, his hermanos, his hermanas, we are not more loved. We are not more righteous. We're not more saved. We're not more special because of our dissimilarity with the world. Instead, such a distinction should compel us to do at least two things. Firstly, it should guide us to reflect upon self. To live into that higher ethical bar. Are we doing the hard inner work to be holy, to be sanctified, to be set aside, to be consecrated? Are we praying? Are we reading our Bibles? Are we loving the all creation like we love ourselves? Are we treating every human being with dignity, seeing the image of the Holy Three on every face? In other words, are we worthy of being called not of this world? Gathering in worship like this with the Holy Trinity in community with others is necessary to consecration, to holiness, to humility. There are so many beautiful places one could be this morning. There are so many beautiful, amazing things one could be doing this morning on this island, and yet you are here. Consider yourselves modern day monks and mystics, right? It's true. The church is declining. There isn't much life in any congregations. But in communal worship, in an engagement like this, is where, where reconciliation happens. It's where healing happens. Listen to this. It's healing with self. Healing with the divine, with the church, with neighbor, with all creation. Can you see evil in this world? Violence, death, war, hunger, poverty, injustice. The evil one is busy at work, friends. God's 
people need protection. God's people need justice. They need hope and love and liberation and freedom and peace and safety. We are not paying attention. It's as if slaughtering of nearly 35 Palestinians isn't enough. Mostly women, children, and elderly. Israel moves forward to bomb the southern Gaza city of Rafa, where more than a million displaced Palestinians are sheltered. Here in Hawaii, we've done the next weekend, the state of Hawaii became the first state legislature to call for a permanent and immediate ceasefire in Gaza. First state. So they, yeah, that's what it was like. Yeah. And yeah. I must believe it's making a difference. I mean, the U.S. has already halted its weapons, transferred to Israel. I'm not sure if you heard. It has already shifted its foreign policy, realizing that invading Rafa is probably not a good idea to be part of that. It will be devastating to Palestinians, and yet Israel has ignored the threat. In fact, their leader recently said, we will stand alone if necessary. The point is, despite knowing the wrong of the invasion, Israel still moved toward what does this say about the entire thing? Perhaps being wrong is not enough. Despite the signs of their allies backing out, wrong apparently is not enough to make Israel stop. You see, perhaps this is a sign of what it looks like to be overwhelmed, to be overcome by hate, by hate, by revenge. Overcome by the evil one who has come to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, there is no alternative matter to this whole thing. It could simply be peace, it could simply be peace, ceasefire, reconciliation, a pathway towards a new future. The U.S. President recently, in an interview, confirmed that there are five, five leaders in the Arab community who are prepared to help rebuild Gaza to help create a two-state solution. You see, Israel is capable of sweet goodness and yet capable of destructive evil. What shall they be known for? By the way, did the Palestinian student protests make a difference? Of course, absolutely. Already, the new debt status has changed, and several universities, like Northwestern University, Brown University, could be followed by Rutgers, John Hopkins, University of Minnesota, and all of these, as you Riverside, all took a wise and holistic approach to the pro Palestinian administration. You know what the leadership did? They met with their students, they talked with their students, and quickly came to agreement. Concept, but an idea, right? To meet and talk, to find a solution together. Northwestern's president, Michael Chill, said, We thought the best way to sustainably de escalate the uh, situation was to actually talk with our students. You see, these forward thinking administrators did not call the police to remove their students by force, they did not ignore or threat their student body, instead, they listened. They are capable of sweet goodness and yet capable of disrupting people. What shall they be known as? And of these administrators and students, they worked on ways to address and confront the bloodshed among Palestinians. They didn't agree on anything, but they agreed on sound, free speech guidelines, financial investment transparency, and they agreed to increase inclusivity of Palestinian faculty and students. We can create and renovate a house for Kenya, which is Middle East and North African slash Muslim students. See, the point, you know, is that addressing the matter, confronting it with solutions, and responding together in unity, man, that's so sound, it so feels like world preservation. It's so sound, it feels like outcome. Let me say, this is not about words, this is not about salvation. We know God is the initiator, we know God does it all, and if we just show up, then that doesn't mean Jesus from the 
us. And does not release us from seeking unity with one another. And does not release us from holiness and consecration. We must be in the modern day bodies and distances. Are we truly people that do not belong to this world? This is the question. Thank you.